according to the landlord, she believes you have cost her in the ballpark of fifteen thousand dollars. I don't think I cost her fifteen thousand dollars. There's no way. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to the most savage show we've got for you here on Holton Wise TV. That is the Tenants from Hell show. As always, I am your host, James Wise. Behind the scenes, I got my guy Tommy cutting up the footage. This show, guys, this is where we bring you the savagery that is involved in the real estate business, more specifically the property management business. And today's show is no different. What we've got is a story, a situation between an accidental landlord who owned a property down in Pace, Florida, and her tenant who was subsequently evicted for non-payment of rent, and this tenant completely trashed the home. Let's take a look at the interview now. To our understanding, according to your landlord, you rented a property from her in Pace, Florida for $1,200 a month, and then at one point you stopped paying and she had to proceed with eviction. Is that correct? No, I was late in November because I had a screw up with my bank account. And uh, we talked and she said that I could make it up in December and everything would be fine. And then all of a sudden she started processing eviction paperwork. And uh, she said, well, they'll stop it if you pay all the money on December 1st. Well, I didn't trust her. She was already looking for a real estate agent. She wasn't going to stop that eviction. And so yeah. I didn't. Okay. Now, when you say she was already looking for a real estate agent, what do you mean by that? Neighbor. One of our neighbors is a real estate agent, and she was looking to hire a real estate agent, and I got told. Okay, Hi hire a real estate agent to, to what? I assume you sell the home to or? Sell, to sell the place. You had the ability to pay her the money, but you didn't want to pay it because you were afraid she was going to sell your home? No, she was going to evict us anyway. So I, I felt that she was just going to go ahead with the eviction and not stop it anyways. Because okay. she had made one statement and then went back on it. I, I didn't trust her. And from talking to the real estate uh, company, it didn't sound like they did either. They didn't think that she was going to stop the eviction either. As far as you living in the home, how long did you live in this home? We were there for three years. Okay. And you paid every single month right up until the eviction? Yep. Okay. And how come you did not pay the rent for the month in question that led to the eviction? What had happened? There there was a problem with my account. Um, I don't know if it got hacked or what, but the, the, the check got returned. And I tried to make a partial payment, and they, they, did, they charged service fees, and then that one got returned. So, I mean, I was, I was in kind of a bind. Okay. I now, killed her, and I killed her right away. You are a grown adult, as is she. Do you really feel like it is her responsibility to help support you and your family? I would assume, you know, as adults, you and your husband, you guys would take on that responsibility to provide a roof over your own heads, no? I think she should have given us a chance. I mean, we'd been there for three years, and we were always, we were always early. And like I said, I know the house, the house got bad in the last year, and, and we never intended for that to happen, but we were working on fixing it. Now, as far as the eviction process down there in Florida, when um, you do an eviction anywhere, of course, there's a court hearing and uh, both the plaintiff and the defendant, uh, you know, the plaintiff being the landlord, the defendant being you, uh, you both stand in front of a magistrate and, and plead your side of the case. Did you go to the eviction hearing and explain all this about you didn't think she would, uh, you didn't think she would actually allow you to stay there even if you paid? Did you explain this to the magistrate? I didn't go. I didn't have a vehicle. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have anything at that time. So you just opted to not pay and then not go to court and you just were accepting that you were being evicted? Yeah, I just didn't do anything. And that part of that, part of that is, uh, it goes along with my disability. I was pretty much in a, in a, in a deep depression and I couldn't move or do anything. Oh. My husband was out of town and I was just... I, I, I just couldn't move. Now, real quick, I want to pause things here. That voice you hear in the background behind April, that is actually April's husband. Now, 
April had said to me that he was out of town when the rent wasn't being paid and all of the issues occurred. According to the landlord, the husband, April's husband, was actually in jail at that time. Your landlord, she provided us a whole slew of photographs of the home and I, I on move out day and I gotta say the the house looked pretty pretty rough. It was in pretty pretty tough shape. You guys tore well, that home up. It, it, it was it was, but it was pretty rough when we moved in too. They never fixed anything. Can you elaborate on that? Um, well, we didn't have a stove for the first eight months. No stove, no dishwasher. Um, I've got I've got pictures and um, and lists of everything that was wrong with the house, and they never really fixed any of it. Um, about eight months later, they got the stove fixed. Uh, the deck, my uh, son fell through the deck once, and my daughter fell through it once. They knew it was bad. They never replaced it. There was a hole that went from the bathroom to the outside that was there when we moved in, and we've been trying to get them to fix it for forever. And a few months ago, they came in and threw a piece of plywood over it, and they know it's all rotten out under there. The joists are rotten and everything. Uh, the kitchen floor is rotted underneath, and that's been that way since day one. The laundry room door was kicked in. The laundry room door had been kicked in and never fixed. It was never lockable. The window fell out on the baby. Yeah, and the window um, in the one bedroom fell out and hit, the ba hit, hit my granddaughter in the head, and that's still not fixed. We put a piece of plywood up that night, and they never came and fixed it. Now, folks, I want you to, to, to really listen to what she was saying right there. See, what she's doing here, she's deflecting the blame onto the landlord. This is an incredibly common tactic that these tenants use. She knows deep down that her behavior was wrong. What she did was wrong. She knows as an adult this is unacceptable. But she's trying to push the blame and push that negative energy onto the behavior of the landlord. If all of these items uh, that you are, you know, saying were not fixed or they were not responding to your request to fix these items, I got to ask, how come you folks decided to stay in the property for three years? Why didn't you just uh, move out after your, your lease ended? I assume it was a one-year lease? Yeah, we just didn't have anywhere else to go. Okay. Um, I, well, you were paying $1,200 a month when you say you didn't have anywhere else to go. I, there, there's no other homes in the area that rent for around $1,200 a month? I have a Great Dane. Okay. And this was the only rental property that would allow you to keep your Great Dane that, in the that, home? That, that, we, that we could find, yeah. Now, I want you guys to pay close attention because this is where the interview starts to take a pretty drastic turn. Up until this point, the tenant has deferred blame, deferred blame. It's the landlord. It's the landlord. She did this to me. She did that to me. But now, at this point... I think April's come to the realization that uh, my line of questioning has more or less backed her into a corner. And, you know, the photos that you guys are looking at that shows you just how destroyed this property is, She's she was there. She lived it. She was the one who allowed that property to get in that condition. So she knows the home is trashed as well, and she can't really talk her way out of it. So now she's... You know, her only recourse at this point is to just admit some level of blame. Granted, she's still trying to push that blame onto something else so it's not her fault. In this case, her disability and her mental health. But it takes a very drastic turn right here as opposed to just landlord shaming. And you had mentioned all of the, the wrongs that you feel your landlord did to you. Not fixing the stove for eight months, squishy floors, a window falling out, them not fixing it. Do you feel like the things that your landlord did to you justifies what you did to her? No. No, I don't. And I didn't want to leave the house that way. I, I really did not want to leave it that way. It just... Yeah, we, ordered a we, we were in order to dumpster. We're going to start hauling stuff out. And they said, don't worry about it. We have it. And the house, the house got bad the way it was within the last year. I had a, I had a really bad relapse um, with, with the mental health. And so I wasn't in charge of anything anymore. The kids were bringing animals home. Um, my son tends to be a little bit of a hoarder and it, it, it just, I just couldn't mentally deal with it. And you know, that's my problem. That's not her fault. That's not her on her at all. Uh, but they never really, they didn't give us a chance to get the stuff cleaned out. We were more than willing to clean it out and clean the place. And they said, no, don't worry about it. Well, the, 
the process from actually serving you an eviction notice up until going to court and then of course the day that they remove everyone and everything from the home that process takes uh, at minimum 30 days correct how long does it how long did it take from the moment she told you you were being evicted to the day they moved you all out I would say it was just at 30 days okay and in that 30 day period that you knew you were being evicted and in the previous month before that, where you didn't pay her the $1,200 in rent, why did you not move any of your items out during those 60 days? I took it the vehicle. It was me by myself. I didn't have anything to move with. My son, my son was in my car in July, and I had this little $400 uh, car that, that, that barely ran, and I, I, I couldn't move anything. I didn't have any place to take it, and I, you know, we got what we could out with uh, the, the car that I, I uh, subsequently bought because I had to have something. Now, again, I've seen a whole slew of pictures and it was probably one of the rougher homes I've ever seen at an eviction. And according to the landlord, she believes you have cost her in the ballpark of $15,000. Now, do you have any intention of paying her back the $15,000 that you cost her? I don't think I cost her fifteen thousand dollars. There's no way. I would say that's a fairly accurate number based upon the condition the home was left in, the lack of rent, the court costs. Uh, I mean, these are some pretty atrocious photographs that uh, we've seen uh, of both the home, the deck, the yard, the shed, everything. It was pretty destroyed. You guys the chopped that home up pretty bad. Rotten. The deck was rotted when we moved in. It was unsafe. The realty company wouldn't even walk on it. The deck is in. The bathroom is in. The back doors are there. Both back doors are rotted out. That's oh. all on them. That's all. We got detailed photos of that stuff when we moved in. Yeah, we do. I understand you have your photos, but what I'm, I'm telling you is a person who's in, in the business as well, from the photographs that I saw, it... It, it is a fair estimate that uh, what you did what, with the items you left in the home, the condition of the home, the holes in the wall, the dirt, the grime, the filth, uh, the, the cars in the backyard, the boat in the backyard. It, it is very fair to say that it is going to cost this, this woman at least $15,000 to fix the things you did to her home. And also costs we're including in that, of course, is the the rent you didn't pay her, the money she had to pay the management company and the attorneys to actually evict you folks. It's going to cost her approximately $15,000. I would say that's a fair estimate. Do you plan on paying back any of that? Or if you think it's a lower number, are you working out some type of an agreement with her to pay her a lesser number so you guys can part ways uh, with all debts paid? Uh, I would like to, yeah. Yeah, I don't like I don't like leaving debts or leaving you know, leaving things the way they are. I don't. What steps have you taken thus far to pay her back the money you owe her? Uh, I haven't taken any steps yet. I'm still trying to get on my feet to figure out what we're going to do. What are you currently doing? Where did you go after that? Uh, we're sleeping at a friend's house right now, and we'll be staying at a hotel here pretty shortly. Now, are are you working? Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a hundred percent disabled vet, but I'm trying to work where I can. I had to I had to put school on hold because of all the things that happened last year, and uh, we're, we're just trying we're trying to make it. All right, folks, thanks for watching today's episode of the Tennis from Hell show. This is your show, folks. If you are out there and you are a landlord or you are a tenant and you think some party on the other side of that equation has harmed you or done anything in any way that you think is wrong, please drop that in the comments below. We want to talk to landlords and tenants about the property management industry and all of the issues issues that arise from it. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. G'day everyone, it's Angela Remora here 
your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.